Hello, and this lecture is on visual vector addition. So last time we talked a little bit about adding up vectors if they're at right angles, uh, but how do we draw the vector that it adds up to, and what happens if they're not at right angles? We'll look at how to add those up mathematically later on. For now, we're just going to focus on how do we draw the resultant vector. And this is a little bit of review from our first kind of uh, take on vectors, but we're going to go more in depth with this one. So adding vectors, uh, there are two methods, and method one is the tip to tail method. It works like this. We take a vector and we move them, or there could be multiple, but we move them so the tip of one vector is lined up with the tail of another vector. Now, oftentimes, if we're looking at A plus B in this case, we'll draw them tail to tail in this case and show the angle between them, but that doesn't help us so much for adding them together. So the first thing we need to do is we need to move this vector kind of up. So we would redraw it up here. And so this way, we now have the tip of one vector um, next to the tail of another vector. The second step is we draw the resultant vector from the tail of our first one to the tip of our second one. So in other words, we're looking at the displacement um, between these two vectors. Even if the representing force, visually right here, this would kind of be displacement in that sense. Or as we call it in kind of vector terms, the resultant. So the resultant ends up being from the um, tail of here to the tip of there. And this would be the resultant vector of our previous two vectors. So the tip to tail method works for any number of vectors, two vectors, five vectors, two million vectors, it doesn't matter. Uh, the next method I often use myself more often than the tip to tail. Um, the reason why is because I usually can get a more accurate drawing uh, if I'm just doing this on paper, but the limitation is that it only works for adding two vectors at a time. So here's the next method, and it's called the parallelogram method, and we'll find out why in a second. So let's go back to our original case of adding A plus B. Um, the first part of the parallelogram method is we're going to be creating a parallelogram at the tip of each vector. So in other words, we're going to draw a horizontal line here, and we're going to draw a kind of um, slanted line right here. So this horizontal line up here must be parallel to this one. It's kind of almost like we moved this up, but we're not going to worry about how long this vector was because we'll actually figure out how long it was based on this one in a second. So we just draw a line that is parallel to the first vector, and we draw another line that is parallel to this vector, and what we notice is that they actually move up. Um, it looks as if we moved it up to right here, uh, basically because they intersect in such a way that they determine the lengths of the previous ones. And so by creating this parallelogram, we get that this side is equal to that side, and this one's equal to that one. And so that leads us to the resultant, which goes from where the two tails met to where the two parallel lines meet. And that's the new resultant vector. So remember, this method only works for adding two vectors at a time. Uh, lastly, the negative of a vector just means the same size but opposite direction. Uh, so if we're subtracting vectors, what we do is we just add the negative of the previous vector. So for subtraction, just add the negative of what you were um, going to be subtracting. So if we had a minus b, um, the first thing that we're going to do is create the negative vector. Uh, so in this case, b is being subtracted, so that's like adding the negative of b. So the negative of a vector is just the same vector in the opposite direction. So this equals a plus negative b. So we're actually going to be adding um, a plus this one right here. So I'm going to redraw this, and now we're going to add them as we would any other um, two vectors. I'm going to do the tip to tail method, so I'm going to move the negative b up, and what we get is that the resultant vector is this one right here. That's it. Uh, three or more bullet points worth of notes, a one to two sentence summary, and your follow-up questions on Google Forms, please.